So what you've seen so far is the, all, are all the reactions involved in the breakdown of glycogen. It's a very simple pathway. And as we will see, the synthesis of, of glycogen is almost as simple. In the synthesis of, gly of, of glycogen, we start with glucose 1-phosphate. So where would glucose 1-phosphate come from originally? Well, imagine that you had a cell that had gotten a bunch of glucose into it. The cell could use hexokinase in the glycolysis pathway to convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. And then phosphoglucomutase, which, can, which catalyzes the reversible reaction I showed earlier, can convert glucose 6-phosphate back to glucose 1-phosphate, as you see here. Now, that turns out to be pretty important because cells, uh, liver cells in particular, will release uh, glucose. They will also take up glucose after a meal, for example, when the glucose concentrations are high. Dealing with that glucose is important, and storing it as glycogen, as we see here, is uh, essential for them to do. So that phosphoglucomutase plays a dual role, both in the breakdown and the synthesis uh, of glycogen. Glucose 1-phosphate, um, in the first step of glycogen synthesis, combines with a molecule called UTP. Now, UTP is, of course, a ribonucleotide that's used in the making of RNA. Uh, in this case, it's used to make a molecule that can be used to build glycogen. Now, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase, as you can see. And what happens in this reaction is that a um, pyrophosphate, the PPI that you can see in the lower uh, part of the figure on the lower right, is released, and the remaining part, the UDP, is attached to the glucose molecule. Now that bond between the glucose molecule and the UDP is a high energy bond. It's an example of what I like to call a, uh, an activated intermediate. Now activated intermediates have a very important property. First of all, they have high energy bonds, and the high energy bonds are used to transfer a part of themselves to something else. Now that's actually what we see in this image on the screen. UDP glucose is getting ready to use its energy to transfer a part of itself to glycogen. And the part of itself it's transferring, of course, is glucose. So this is a reaction that's catalyzed by glycogen synthase, as you can see. And it's a fairly simple reaction. What the glycogen synthase is doing is grabbing that glucose and uh, making a 1-4 bond so that the glycogen chain is growing by one more glucose. The remaining product, UDP, can then go back and be phosphorylated and used for making RNA or making additional UDP glucoses. Now, um, of course, all that glycogen synthase is going to do is make uh, glycogen with alpha-1-4 bonds. And you recall that glycogen uh, has many branches. So then the question is, how do the branches get there? And the branches get there by an enzyme that has a name that's very long uh, that most people call branching enzyme, and so I've decided to call it branching enzyme here. You can see that what branching enzyme does is it grabs a section of a long alpha-1-4 uh, polymer of glucose uh, on a glycogen chain and then cl clips it and transfers part of it backwards uh, to where it can make an alpha-1-6 bond with another sugar. And it's in this way that the branches actually get into glycogen.